good morning, evening, and everything in between. As you can tell, what we're going to be talking about today is polynomials, and more specifically, how we can take a polynomial function and put it into uh, Python. So as a super quick refresher, if you're trying to remember how what a polynomial is and whatnot, if we think about a polynomial, if I did something as simple as, if I did something as simple as x squared plus one, right? This is a polynomial function. It's not a crazy one, it's not anything fancy, but if we think about it, how would I represent this inside of Python? Now, yes, we could go in and we could say, for example, uh, utilize something like the math library or just simply x squared or x times x plus one. That, that's one way to do it. But when we start getting into more complex uh, polynomial functions, that variation that I have there can you know, become very difficult. And so how can I represent uh, all of my different polynomials in some way that's easy to manage and easy to represent, specifically easy to represent? Well, the way I want you to think about it is let's reimagine uh, this function for a second. Well, if we think about it, that x squared, what we could imagine that as is that's technically 1 times x squared. Now, before I move and jump into that one, technically speaking, you know, we also might want to represent, say, what's happening at the x to the one-th power. And the way we could think about that is, technically speaking, that's zero times x to the one power. Again, uh, as anything times zero, it's going to be zero. So, you know, in our mind, what we do when we uh, make x squared plus one is we're just you know, removing uh, that from uh, our visualization of the formula. And so as you can kind of imagine, we're starting to go down uh, all of our different powers. And so technically speaking, this last little bit would be one times x to the zero power. And again, x to the zero would be one, so one times one. Now the question is, and more specifically, what I've just done, how can I now take this and sort of represent it inside of Python. Well, there's a way we could do that. If we think about it, what if I took each one of these uh, values that I just added in, the, the one, the zero, and the one, and I used that to represent my polynomial. So maybe say, for example, I come in and say something like one to represent that x squared, comma, zero to represent that x one, one to represent x at the zeroth spot. And so what I've just done is I've created a list. Now, it's just a list right now, so how could I possibly turn that into, uh, say for example, an actual polynomial function? That's where NumPy gets to sort of come into play. So in our case, let's say for example, I did exactly that. I took uh, my numbers, and I made a one, zero, and a one. Again, I've just created a numbered list. There's nothing fancy about this. There is no polynomial going on right now. But as you can see, I've clearly imported NumPy to start this application. And so what I'm able to do, and I'll actually just kind of print it out, if I did print np.poly1d, poly1d for uh, poly one dimensional, uh, is effectively going to take in some parameter. So in my case, I happen to have a parameter. I have numbers. And so what this is going to do is it'll actually display. In our case, if we you know, took a look, we were looking at, say, for example, this x squared 1. This will actually go about doing it. So if I hit play, that's exactly what we see. Now, if you notice, it is still adding in, say, in our case, the one uh, at the start, but you can sort of see that from a visualization perspective, oh, well, you know, it's doing its best to show that this first one is raised to the second power, and it's skipping over the zero because it's a zero, and it's even doing a nice little visualization. visualization. It's not doing x raised to the zero power. It's just going ahead and saying, uh, I'm going to use uh, the one in this case. And you can do this with any type of polynomial. So if I came in and just did something like a one, two, three, four, five, and I hit play, 
the exact same thing is going to happen. So 1 times x to the 4th power plus 2 times x to the 3rd, 3 times x to the 2nd, 4 times x to the 1st, and 5 times x to the 0th power. Now the reason why this is pretty beneficial is now that I have my polynomial function, or I have a way to represent my polynomial function, one of the things that poly1d also allows us to do is we can treat it as if it was an actual function. So let's say, for example, I came back to the uh, 1, 0, 1 variation. So again, this is simply just x squared times x plus 1. Well, again, if I wanted to, say, for example, find out some values, now that I have my uh, polynomial, polynomial function, just like any function, maybe I could pass it a parameter, and then it's going to return back some value associated to that. And so the way we could think about that is, uh, let me just come in here and take this out. And I'm going to just call this uh, poly as a variable. And so, again, like I was saying, if I came in and then treated this as if it was a function. So I'll say the calculation is poly 5. Okay, well, what we're saying here is uh, what would the value of this function be if x was equal to 5? And, you know, if you have done a little math uh, in your day, you can tell that that's 5 times 5 plus 1. So 5 times 5, that's 25, uh, plus 1, 26. And so... If I came in and said calc, I should be able to click and run. And what do you know? I happen to see 26, 25 plus 1 is 26.